welcome to Zip Tide. Today, there's a whole lot of work to do from front to back of the car, so let's jump right on the front and mount the front end. This car will be getting a removable front end. I'm stealing a design from drag racing where two hooks on the chassis attach a tree to the underside of the nose. It's a simple yet lightweight design that should make surfacing the car extremely easy. All the tubing is 4130 chromoly, so it's extremely strong for its given weight. A piece I've been meaning to add for a long time is my race pack dash. It's the best solution for any build on top of looking super race car. I had the mounts cut out by send cut send and they're interchangeable in case I ever decide to have a bigger steering wheel that may block the side of the dash. Last episode, I made a set of rear caster pickups that were unfortunately just too small. I updated the design once again and had them cut out. These are probably overkill, but there's no kill like overkill. Another previous project was mounting the fuel cell. Currently, there are just mounts holding it up. However, there's nothing keeping it from moving front to back or side to side. I'm going to build a chromoly cage for it to sit in, which should be extremely stout, but still allow it to be removed from the bottom. I still need to add the pads that keep it from moving, however, that will be added once the motor is removed. We are going to scale this car because I'm very interested to see what it's going to end up being. Um, Guido, what's your guess? I'm guessing 1,050 pounds. He says 1,050. I'm thinking like 1,250 myself. Um, we're going to load every single thing I have onto it, so I think he's wrong, but we're going to find out. I hope he's right. Okay, so the Porsche is way too heavy. Me and Guido wrongly took our stabs at what we thought this thing was gonna weigh. Guido thought it was chromoly, thought it was gonna be about a thousand pounds. I thought it was gonna end up being 1250 to 1300 pounds. And uh, both wrong, both very wrong. It weighs 1590 pounds, which to meet my 1800 pound goal, that's 210 pounds. Now there's no windows, there's no sheet metal, there's much of a car honestly here so it needs a lot and doesn't have a lot of weight to make it to there therefore this thing needs to go on a diet a very major diet next up i'm building the front firewall i start by making a load of paper templates a good tip paper templates are easily saved with some masking tape if you end up cutting too much off 
brought my templates to a buddy's shop and transferred them onto metal. Cutting sheet metal can be a terrible time if you don't have access to a stomp shear. A stomp shear cuts a long, perfectly straight line with next to no effort. Gone are the days of using an angle grinder and being in complete misery. Now it's onto the break, where certain panels get the little bends they need to just fit a little better. Now, my favorite part, the bead roller. Truthfully, this should be done before the break, but I was so tired, I forgot. Nevertheless, I lay out the lines an inch and a quarter in and use an inch and five eighths tube for the corners. Bead rolling strengthens the panel while also making it look very good. There are multiple types of dies, so the possibilities are endless. Now it's simply on to trimming up the panels for a good fit. Before I weld them in, however, I mark out my welds about 1 inch long and 2 inches apart because the whole panel does not need to be fully welded. The part I'm most excited about is finally here. I'm going to finish the design of my turbo headers, but the first step is to add an amount to support the weight of the turbo. This is my Mishimoto water to air intercooler. It's a beautiful piece while also being perfectly sized for my build. A standard air to air intercooler is just not practical for mid engine cars on top of water to air being very efficient. The major downside is weight and complexity, however practicality is just too big to overlook. The last pieces to build are the flange and screamer pipe for my tile wastegate. Wastegates control the exhaust flow to the turbo and in effect boost, so it's extremely important for them to have a good exhaust flow or else you may get boost creep.
as always, I'm extremely happy with how this car is coming out from the firewall, the dash, the fuel cell beginnings, and of course the turbo system. This has been in my brain since I built the first version of this car. I always wanted a center exit exhaust. It's inspired by a Ferrari F40, so if you've seen something very similar, that's where from. That is the Porsche. It just makes me happy, makes me very happy. I'm glad to be back. My game plan is to be posting videos about every two weeks because it takes time to edit and it takes time to just do this. This took a long time. I'm gonna try my best. A lot of things happen, but I will see you again here in two weeks. I hope on this, but it could be the lawnmower, it could be the Doge for all I know, or it could be something completely different. But anyway, I will see you then. Do it!